What's going on? Welcome into Bayou Bengals football. So LSU, LSU has their uh, has their scrimmage today. I'm not sure what time it was. I'm not sure it could be going on right now, but um, the things. I guess what I'm what I would be interested to see is a, if I could watch this would be really just how Mason Smith is moving. Um, I assume he's probably not going to get a whole lot of snaps in this, but I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll get in a little bit. I'd like to see, you know, you really hope for for him in this team um, that he comes back and looks a lot like the player in 2021. Because I watched I watched the Kentucky game specifically of Mason Smith, and I was just blown away. I mean, this guy has just rare um, ability to. He just looks so comfortable, not only rushing the passer, uh, but stopping the run as well. He just looks so comfortable um, getting off the snap getting into an offensive lineman and uh, engaging and uh, controlling them. Uh, does a good job of using his, a, a long arm. Uh, he knows when to shed blocks. Um, he reacts quickly to uh, the play, reacts quickly, and always is in a good leverage position where he can see the quarterback. So has a really nice all-around skill set of a guy who not only is is proven to succeed at the college level and will continue to do so if he's healthy, but really has a, a really nice skill set that's going to translate well to the NFL. Well, I think the question is, I mean, this is kind of besides the point of talking LSU football. The main question is how good could could Mason Smith be at the NFL level? And I think I think he has a chance to be really good, but um, is he, you know, a defensive tackle is kind of tough. Because, and I say tough, I mean like you have. So Aaron Donald's a gold standard, but not everyone can be. Not everyone can be Aaron Donald. Uh, so, can I guess the question is, you know, there's kind of like Pro Football Focus had this. There's kind of like a strong second tier of defensive tackles in the NFL. Can Mason Smith? The second tier, I mean, behind Aaron Donald. So can Mason Smith kind of be like the strong second tier with the Quinn and Williams, the Dexter Lawrence, um, the who's an, who's another dominant, who's another guy up in that group? But can he be that guy? Can he be as good as Quinn and Williams, Dexter Lawrence? I'm gonna say yes. I think he definitely can. Um, I think it is a far cry, you know. Can he be as dominant as Aaron Donald? You know, they, there's some rumblings of that with Jalen Carter, but that's just, you know, like statistically, what are the odds you're going to have another player is close to a guy that's in an all-time great, maybe the maybe the best ever interior defensive lineman? Like, what are statistically those odds? You know, it's like I don't know. I will. I guess I won't make that comparison. But to me, you know, if Mason Smith. If he goes on to to be like the second tier behind Aaron Donald, dominant type of, type of defensive tackle, I feel like that's a, a huge win. So exciting, exciting to see how he performs uh, this upcoming season. And uh, hopefully he stays healthy. And I'm excited to see the impact he has for this LSU team. But, yeah, beautiful day here. Beautiful day up here in the Midwest in Michigan. Um, yeah, just, you know, a couple of the few days before kind of really reminded me of football season, you know, football season really, uh, creeping closer and closer. Um, you know, you know, I haven't, I, I guess the last episode I said this, but, uh, you know, it still kind of holds the truth. I haven't really been talking Jane Daniels as much recently. And to me, you know, I guess, you know, I'm think. I keep saying that, you know, this isn't really my, I don't think this is my bias coming out. I keep saying that LSU, LSU is probably my pick to win the national title, but I keep thinking that maybe Jane Daniels holds them back. But at the same time, I go, you know, I get, or I guess the, the question I'm trying to raise is Jane if Ellis, if I found out today, if I could look in ahead to the future and found out LSU won the national title, 
to me, there's like a small part. I don't know about small part. There's a little bit of me that would say that maybe Nussmeyer took the job and was the guy that led him to it. I guess not, you know, this sounds like I'm ripping into Jane Davis, but to me, I have a hard time seeing, this could age poorly, I understand this. To me, I have a hard time seeing Jaden Daniels as a guy that leads a team, leads this team to the national title. You know, this just popped in my head, but I think this is an interesting appearance. To me, Jaden Daniels kind of reminds me of a guy that played at Ohio State a few years ago. If you're older, if you're prob- if you're in your 20s now, if you're in your uh, at least, well, I don't even, if you're in your mid-20s, you probably, at least your mid-20s, you remember this guy. His name was Terrell Pryor, quarterback at Ohio State. Now, Terrell Pryor was a guy a lot like Jaden Daniels. You know, he could make he could make the intermediate long-range throws, but that was he just didn't do it consistently and was really more of an athlete at quarterback. Now, Jaden Daniels, that's the question. Can he, I guess there's, there's two, I, I kind of look at this two ways. To me, there's two ways Jaden Daniels could go this year. The other guy he reminds you of is Jalen Hurts, because Jalen Hurts continued to get better as a passer and you know become more consistent as a thrower. So if Jaden Daniels can become more like Jaden Hurts, a guy that takes another step in his development as a thrower, which people have said that he has improved, but is that just hearsay? Because that's the thing. A lot of his teammates, you know, kind of get off the point for a second, but a lot of his teammates say he's improved as a passer when that question is asked. There has not been a lot of people that I have heard, like the coaching staff or the players, have just come out and say initially that he's improved as a passer. Now, does that mean they're all lying? No. But that, to me, usually if a guy is improved, you know, people are saying it without it being asked. So to me, Jaden Daniels reminds, you know, if he stays more like Terrell Pryor and he's a guy that just is a good runner, but doesn't really have that next gear as a passer to to bring a national title. Now, Ohio State, they they were close to a national title contender with Terrell Pryor, but I really I really think he limited that offense a little bit. I think kind of like Jaden Daniels, um, if he stays the same, or you know, obviously could get worse, but hope you know you got to believe he's going to get better. That that that's probably not he does probably not have a good enough skill set to lead this team to a national title because you know like I guess I'll say this if I saw the if I looked into the future and saw LSU won the national title Jaden Daniels was a starter for the whole season I would one thing would immediately pop into my mind I would immediately assume that this is an a that this became an elite elite roster Multiple of freshmen emerged on this team, whether Kyle it was Kyle Parker, Ashton Stamps. I think, you know, one or multiple of the transfers became a superstar. Maybe an NFL draft caliber guy like Andre Sam became that guy or Spates became that guy or both. I would assume a lot of things just went in their favor. And I think that's the case for why LSU can win the national title this year. You believe that they are, they've done enough enough good things recruiting in the transfer portal developing the roster that this could be a year where all things come together and it just become you just have an elite team that just rides the I don't want to say roller coaster because that sounds up and down but just kind of rides the train and it's just a smooth ride maybe just a couple bumps in the way maybe they have a, a tough game against Alabama they have to pull out again maybe they have to rematch Georgia in the SEC but maybe Georgia takes a step back. That's the other thing. You know, like breaking down the – like we, we broke down the Florida State-LSU game logically. But if you look at the Georgia-LSU game and break it down logically, you think Georgia was 20 points better last year. Georgia is probably going to be about the same, if not better, and LSU is going to be better. So – by that logic, you think Georgia should win again. But what if LSU is better and Georgia takes a step back? That, you know, that's that's probably the case for LSU to win the game. Now, honestly, I don't know. You kind of you know Georgia's going to be good, but it's like everyone says, 
free peating is so hard. So let's just say, you know, with how statistically tough it is to three peat, you got to believe just by knowing that, that it's going to, there's a high chance it's going to be someone else. And if it's someone else, why not LSU? So yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot, of, I could go on for a while. There's a lot of points I could make, a lot of cases I could make for LSU uh, to win the national title, but um, I don't have necessarily time in this episode to get into all of those. We'll touch on a couple. So, but yeah, I mean, Georgia going to be a tough day, game. Georgia's going to be really good once again. Florida could be really tough. Florida is a team that I think is kind of under the radar. I think they could be tougher than people think. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that'll be that'll be an in, that'll be an interesting game. Florida and LSU. It always seems to be a really close game. Even back when Les Miles was there, there was it seemed like well, Les Miles. Uh, a few years after Urban Meyer left, Les Miles and LSU kind of had Florida's number, but. Uh, Urban Meyer, when Urban Meyer was there, like 07, 08, 09, that's when Florida really had the edge in that game, and that really flipped uh, once Urban Meyer left. I think LSU won in 10, 11, um, where I don't know if they played in 11, but I know they won in 2010. So, yeah, they really had the edge in that game when Les Miles was there. So, or when Les Miles with Les Miles post Urban Meyer, um, but yeah, that that should be a really a really uh, tight uh, contest, and uh, I'm looking looking forward to that. So yeah, I mean it'll it's I mean it's not going to be it's not going to be an easy schedule, or it's not going to be easy for LSU this year, obviously. Um, but yeah, so. I'm going to wrap with that, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Kind of just a short clip today. Make sure to stay tuned for more episodes and clips from the show. Till next time, peace.